Welcome to another episode of Sea Time, and of course, thank you very much for watching. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I have my co anchors with me, Ife Omai and Ife Olu It's good. <laughs> Hi. Why are you laughing? <laughs> no reason. <laughs> <laughs> no reason. Is it laughing? <laughs> laughing is good for the body, but why you laugh for no reason? There's need to check it. I'm okay. Better be for a reason you don't want to share that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, cool. All right, moving on to the main stories for conversation. Socially distanced and COVID compliance 37th annual MTV VMA ceremony held on Sunday and was hosted by Keke Palmer with performances by Lady Gaga, Ariana Grande, The Weeknd and others. Lady Gaga wins um, Tricon Award and Artist of the Year, The Weeknd Naps Video of the Year and Best R&B. Um, Savage gives Megan Thee Stallion a win, Song of the Year, and Best Collaboration went to Lady Gaga and Ariana Grande's Rain on Me. Best Direction went to Taylor Swift's The Man, of course she directed it herself. Then Best Music Video from Home went to Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber, Stuck With You. And Best Group and Best Pop, of course, went to BTS. Amazing. Yeah, cool stuff. You know, I actually didn't know it was... The, sh the show was happening on, over the weekend until the news about the show happened. I saw it happening. That was when the news was happening. Right. I didn't even stay up to two minutes. Really? Why not? Ah, uh, okay. I think it was a red carpet when I, I, mm. I tuned in and I loved the distance. <laughs> <laughs> on the red carpet, it made me laugh. So, of course, you had the social distance um, um, map thing yeah. on, on the floor. And then the, the anchor, the red carpet guy had um, this the long stick, pole. Yeah. Which is my, so it was interesting and funny. And, <laughs> and then I just went back to... I'm not sure what I was watching then. I think it was Big Brother. I'm not sure. Yeah. But something was clashing at the time. But I'm yeah. surprised I didn't... Because I know Kiki did a, a good job in terms of pushing it. She was really excited about being like the host and mm -hmm. everything. But for, and I know she said the day, but for some reason, I didn't feel like there was like a countdown or like, yeah. like this is actually the day. Mm. Either ways, I really like the fashion they that came on, but I, I, I guess maybe that's why it wasn't so much of a big deal because there wasn't that many people. But I like how the guests showed up. I liked a lot of the fashion pieces that I saw on the set. Obviously, Lady Gaga did her thing and really killed it for me personally. Or I feel like person brought a lot of effort. I also like Miley style, even though a lot of people might disagree with me. I like Miley Styles. Obviously, the performances. I think lately people have been coming up with really good music, I, I think. Um, all the people that I saw on the awards list are quite deserving, if I could put it that way. So I didn't have any problems with um, the list. If anything, I thought that the list, the, the, um, the categories were quite tight. Like Everybody on that list was a lot more deserving. Mm -hmm. So everyone that won shouts like, yeah, well, good, kudos to you and your fans for voting you, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I'm really excited about the the whole show and the coverage that i'm seeing online i think even if it wasn't like the normal type of show it was still pleasant and still really professionally dodged the stage was still gang -gang, and they didn't reduce the effort you know like the quality of the whole mm. thing so i like that i think uh, i would agree with you on the fact that the quality was the same it didn't feel mm. like a lot of performances were not even done in that room you know it felt like they were there it, the, it was well put together. It was yeah. well thought out. The organizers did a great job. I mean, they with did that. a great job. We're yeah. talking about not being done in the room. It was actually done live, but mm. from different event mm. centers mm. in mm. the city. Yeah, mm. that's quite amazing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that's a lot of effort for. It is for some other people. Like, yeah. You know. And yeah. then big shout out to Lady Gaga. Of course, she grabbed five awards, five outfits, and then the Tricon Award, of course, mm. which is one of the five awards which she took away, yeah. and it's the first. And that one is honoring people that doing excessively well or um, commendably well in three different fields which is um film fashion and philanthropy and music and mm. she we, we can't take that away from mm, lady absolutely. gaga she she's doing a lot in those three areas and those three um fields and i think it's really amazing big shout out to lady gaga i think she stood out the most she's been me. taking the spotlight mm. a lot on these i was remember nah, the nah, last nah, one that nah, she did nah, nah, where she nah, nah. was basically taking layers off well, mm. I was yeah. with gala i think yeah mm -hmm. she's taking yeah. layers off i don't know i feel like lately the awards have been her scene even the grammys her performance with um by Lee Cooper. Do you, say, do you say lately? I mean, that has always been Lady Gaga's thing. No, Just right she went now, quiet for a while. Um, well, she went quiet, but when it comes to coming into award, an event, yeah. uh, award in that way, that has her. been her thing, actually. No, uh, okay, well, I that feel like I feel like the thing. break 
for me was quite loud. And I think then it's her style then, became a lot more, yes, shouty, but more matured. Yeah, more because putting meat on your body doesn't wasn't yeah, yeah. That yeah. one for me was yeah. chosen so, for yeah. me back then. She, she got less crazy. Mm -hmm. And more, yeah. more palatable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think um, um, <laughs> for me, another person well deserved for that. Um, music for his um, best video of the year was um, the weekend for mm. Blind and Lights. That was an amazing video, yeah. and um, I think that video came out before the lockdown. Was yeah. it during the lockdown? Mm. I can't remember yeah. for a fact now. But that is an amazing video. There's no, there's no two ways about that. We're gonna so watch that it again. Well and of course, shout out to Megan the Stallion. Oh, of oh yeah. yeah. She's, she's climbing. She's yeah. climbing. She's climbing. And yeah. I'm so happy. Really I think good. sometimes yeah. getting shot gets you where you uh -huh. <laughs> you need to be. It happened with Fifty Joe, Cent. He got shot nine times. Can I get what we need to do with that? Can we shoot you? Eh? When can we shoot you? Do, do, Why do you want to be shot? Do, do, do I deserve to be shot? Uh, you don't want to go do, do, do high. I? Uh, well, you don't I, want to. I don't I don't get high but can I not? Can I? Can I not get shot by any of you guys? Why not? Uh, 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 oh, he so. wants a celeb to shoot him. Um, Don Jazzy. Mm. That would be cool. Okay. No whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, moving on to the next story. Adele is being accused of cultural appropriation over Notting Hill. Photo uh -huh. showing of Banku's nod. She shared a photo for her, um, of her in a Jamaican bikini top and with her hair in Bantu knots. <laughs> what I took from the story and the conversations online is that, first of all, people don't know the difference between race, nationality, and continents. Hmm. First, of, first of all, when people, when people say Africans are not complaining, okay, well, I mean, if you're talking about race, yes, you can call Jamaicans Africans, but if you're talking about location, they're not in Africa. And I think a lot of people mix that up as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting, though, every time I see, I think I've been privileged enough to understand the realities of both parties, Africans living in Africa and Africans living abroad. So I'm always going to be <clears throat> of that awareness and use that every time I have this conversation. It's to be on... It's not, it's not unexpected actually that... three now, actually. It's not just two. Africans living in Africa, Africans living abroad, and black Americans. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually. <laughs> so, um, I think it's, it's not surprising anymore when Africans living in Africa are not empathetic or even understand or take seriously the, the whole fuss about cultural appropriation. Mm -hmm. We're in a place where we are very appreciated for how we look with our gili and go to the fanciest places and nobody is, you know... I was going to swear, but no one is rubbish talking about our outfits and stuff. But if you take it abroad, it is very uncomfortable when you see that a black person would wear a bantu knot. And let's just, let's just use Adele's um, outfit, for example. A black person would wear this same outfit. And you see a lot of media platforms saying, this is ghetto, this is tacky, this is ugly, this is gross, it's unacceptable, your hair needs to be tamed, blah, blah, blah. But when a white woman does the same thing, then you tag it and, and say, oh, it's beautiful, gorgeous, oh, Afri appreciating the culture, whatever. An African would not understand that reality. So it might look like people are exaggerating. But for, if you're living from that reality, you would react that As way. As an African, I think you're losing me in this conversation now. So how exactly did um, Adele culturally appropriate um, the Jamaican style? misappropriate. Okay, so uh -huh. I think the, the problem with cultural appropriation in general, like, it's not really about the person who's doing it. It's, it's a bigger picture, right? So it isn't about the fact that a woman is wearing, a white woman is wearing African culture. It is that there is a an unfair balance in how we are represented when another person of color does it, okay? So Adele might honestly have, an, have a personal re, um, relationship with the Jamaican culture and isn't necessarily using the intention to um, uh, exploit that culture. But the point is that this today's society, there's still an unfair balance. So it's not really about Adele. It is more hmm. about the, the, the scope of it. It might be draining for each other conversation. Well, but at least it's not the reality. It's still not, it's still not hitting. So I followed this conversation online. I didn't even know we were going to talk about it. It happened um, late yesterday, right? Or I think mid yesterday. Hmm. And um, I mean, at first when I saw the picture, I was already looking at, at talking about how she has really gotten a, the nice body she wants. I mean, uh, every Everybody was looking at the angle and then I opened the comment session of course people were talking about how she she has really gotten the snatch waist and all mm. and then I saw the cultural appropriation thing and then I was I'm um, confused and I saw people talking about um, how Jamaicans feel and then Jamaican actually came out, came out. to say we are fine with her wearing this. Okay, so if you're really going to talk about cultural appropriation yeah, yeah, Jamaica doesn't the have that balance, problem, but okay. they don't have the problem. So why is it exactly a cultural appropriation thing? If they feel that there is no problem in it, uh, we, and okay. why can because we? The country, the, why can we look it's not as about white as we want to? It's not about, but when these people okay, can look, I ask you guys? Do okay. you not understand 
that there is an unfairness in how black culture is represented when it is worn by black people in America. For I example. agree that there is an unfairness. Okay, that's what, that's what However, if we have gotten to the point whereby whatever anybody wears has to come under scrutiny, then how exactly is this word going to look like in the next 20 years? Did she misrepresent? My question to you is, mm. does she misrepresent the Jamaican culture? Misrepresent? Any? I mean, misappropriate, sorry, the Jamaican well, culture. Well, it's only her intentions, but from this picture to me, no. But it's like I said, it's not about the picture. Well, I think that a lot of people should take It's about cues. this picture the right fact now. That this conversation the world, is about this picture. They call, the fact, if, the you, fact, if you the cannot fact, understand the ideology behind it, it would be hard to have this conversation. Look, the fact that a lot of people want... Do you know that we can, we, we can be taken, we can be dragged for cultural appropriation all the time as well for copying a lot well, of Western... Well, minorities can't really be dragged for cultural appropriation. Yeah, that's, aside from that, but that's what I'm saying. But, and then we can't even say Jamaicans right now. They're not coming out to say it. I even saw somebody that said, we even want Adele to drop a low pan the other side. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? Like, people want to see stuff like that. They want people to actually take... Love our culture for what it you is. See, the so thing I don't is, we see... are proud of our culture. It's not about that. That's why I, I, I think I was having a conversation. But you just don't want a white person to love you. No, it. it is not about that. I feel either. that is racist as well. You need to understand where these people are coming from. Okay, African. And that's what I was, I was telling Sally that has been on the show before on Twitter. Mm -hmm. It isn't about that. Africans don't have that problem. If anything, we appreciate when our culture is being put on platforms like that because mm -hmm. we are proud of it. We are. People are talking, when it, most of the time when you talk about cultural appropriation, you are pointing out the unfairness in how it is accepted. A good example, if you want to move away from Adele's story, is Kim Kardashian. When, she, when, when um, what's it called, Brandy was younger and all those people, when we were watching TV, if you had cornrows on, it was disgusting. It was on a table where you couldn't go for interviews like that in America. Kim Kardashian wore um, the braids and it was all of a sudden called Kim Kardashian braids or whatever. That is cultural appropriation. So it is not culturally appropriate when a higher race does... Ma um, represents mm -hmm. my For culture. Minority. That's the problem. Yes. Yeah. So it's not like as if no, there's anything wrong with Adele so we wearing bantu yeah. knots mm -hmm. or having Jamaican outfit. Why is the word to be represented? No, yeah. it is that there is still an unfairness. So we're using that. Using so the fact that there's an unfairness, are we supposed white to focus on an Adele or focus on the media? Yes, yeah, focus who, on the media. And this well, the conversation is usually not focusing on the media. It's usually focusing on the person, the person doing who is we're always appreciating looking at whatever like, culture it is. And if someone thinks all pop stars have a problem. Because they, they feel like they're the ones may, um, culturally appropriating different cultures and stuff. And I don't see any sense in that. I think this conversation is, is, is very broad. It's very ambiguous. And it's and also about not, context, where it is yeah, happening. Yeah, so of course. Not, it's but, it's and then we reality. need to focus on the context. Okay, maybe when we're talking about Beyonce, you know, you could see some sense in that. That one was proper heavy cultural appropriation because she's making profit from mm -hmm. it. And that is also arguable. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will argue with you as well. Mm -hmm. But in Adele's case, that is the normal dress code for... Nothing Hill Carnival. It's nothing new. That's mm. what people nothing wear. Hill Black. Carnival is nothing new. Why are you finish rhyming? Let's go on a break. <laughs> 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 Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> and I just think um, a lot of people need to slow down, calm down. Like, <laughs> life is not. I, I as think it's to be unfair to just dismiss their, their ills just like that. For me personally, it's no, we're not because, it's not, because it's not your reality. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Because calm down. your reality doesn't mean that they, they are making noise. Maybe the, the way the conversation is being handled is a problem when you are focusing on the person that is just enjoying other people's culture there's nothing wrong with that and if the conversation was was being a lot more you know objective that okay guys this is another example of the media praising a white person for doing the same thing Thank that you. conversation will be better but to completely dismiss it that they are you know in their feelings or in their heads but to I, me I, I is don't not know. As well I, you know you said jamaicans don't have that issue yeah and yes. then and why are drag. you now stressing for jamaica to be honest with you, this is not about jamaica this is about, it's about bantu who? Nuts. this is about black culture oh. that's what it's about okay wait okay. Uh, and uh, Okay, yeah. um, moving on you. to the next story. Tunde Ednot gives reason as he kicks against Igbo presidency. He said, and I quote, an Igbo man should not be allowed to be president of Nigeria. I have a feeling the Biafra will be established if that happens. They will leave us so, and Nigeria will crumble if they leave. Um, Igbos, Igbos have been planning Biafra since. They have them together. Let's not allow Igbo in for now. We are in this Nigeria together. Um, you will not run anywhere. We die here. Let's come to you, you're Ibo. Me? What do you think? I'm also Ibo. Come to me. <laughs> you want to go first? No, no, no. Okay, so I think what he's saying is probably something that a lot of people would not be very comfortable to say in public, mm. but um, some group of, or some people from Igbo, how do I put it now, from the, the East, yeah. let me, yeah, 
actually have this fear. Like, of course, we have a lot of Igbos that are jeering for Biafra, saying, oh, we want Biafra, we think we'll be better if we, if we stand alone and go mm. and um, um, improve our place and all that. However, the question that keeps coming to mind, I just hope nobody cuts off my head for this one. The question that keeps coming to mind is, when you look at um, the areas or the states that you say they've improved, like Lagos State, um, um, maybe the South South and any other state you want to really look at. It's a factor and function of the government there and what the governors are doing. I mean, as much as Lagos State gets their um, um, allocation or what's it called, the states in the east also get the same thing. We have a lot of resources we could have developed based on industrialization from ABA and a lot of other things that have been going in, uh, in, in, in that area. But we've had leaders and governors and people who have been in the, in, in the place of position that have not really done anything with those monies. And we can say it is corruption. I mean, corruption is a problem of Nigeria from every day to every day. But at the end of the day, there were people there. Now, if we decide to go for Biafra, is that going to change our problem? Mm. Is that going to change the leaders? Is that going to start teaching them how to lead the people, how to she industrialize? Us. Okay, us. How to industrialize, how to evolve, how to use what we have to, to become global players. Is that going to really do anything? So I think that beer friends are not really focusing on what our problem is, but thinking that if... Biafra is taken away from Nigeria, it will automatically make us the United States of America of Africa. Mm. I don't know if that makes sense. That's how I feel about it. And most times, maybe because I'm also very Nigerianized, like I'm I'm a patriot in that level and I really want Nigeria to succeed and be a better place. I'm not in for Biafra that way. Yes, I'm in for um, acknowledging the sufferings, acknowledging the history, giving people respect. Those that are asking for apology should probably get the apology they deserve and all that. But to now say we really want to divide, is that really our problem? Is that the solution? So a lot of well, Igbos have touch, that fear. They've got the that fear the and they don't want the it. the presidency of Nigeria having an Igbo president? I mean, if, if that's just what's on the table, yes, I think it is overdue. I think we need to have okay. a presidency okay. from that angle. But I'm saying, is this fear valid? A lot of people have thought about this, but they will not openly come out to say it. Okay. The way the has for, it. for me personally, um, the, the, my interactions with my Igbo side has always been from um, a very sore perspective because my, my grandparents were part were victims of Biafra and it really like changed the dynamics of mm -hmm. my family and everything. So I've known a bit of the history and stuff. The problem I, I found with this with this tweet is that you are acknowledging that there is an oppressed party and then you are saying that because they are oppressed they might run away so let's make sure that they don't get the power to run mm -hmm. away so mm -hmm. that we can continue to oppress and that's how I got the story. I think that um, you have to start acknowledging why Biafra was needed not what the problem is in when they get the Biafra, they are getting. They're, they're, they're feeling like they need that exit because they're not being represented properly, and there is an, a, a systemic oppression when it comes to that, especially with the political party and being on the seats and you know running the country, blah blah blah. Okay, so I feel like once you start to address that type of thing, a country cannot heal if you have not addressed the past. Look at every single book in the in the every country in the history book that has experienced such a thing and i think the idea of the, the fact that they're not teaching us in schools the country the country is not necessarily addressing it there's always going to be that problem i didn't like so anything it's addressing it the same thing as saying we want to pull out of nigeria i think addressing it will be also start talking about why there's no press there hasn't been a president from the east how you can in incorporate definitely, that um, definitely. also also i think also the resources that you were mentioning is a bit um, forced to me but i'm not i'm not very um, you know, uh, educated on, on politics, but I know that there's been a disparity in how resources have been shared, especially when it comes to the northerners and the east and Yoruba mm, people. I know that there's a lot of yeah. um, um, unsettlement when it comes to that. So I don't think it's that equal and everything is all rosy. Dozy. It actually works so, with your um, number of population <clears> and <throat> what can really be. I mean, it's, I, I know that we have problems, but I'm saying that division is not going to solve a problem. And that fear for me, I'm not saying if Biafra happens tomorrow, I'm not, say, I'm not going to say I'm not a Biafra or whatever. It's, it is what it is. Um, by roots and by, I, I might decide to be able to claim um, Nigeria because of if they're still in Nigeria, I would decide to say I'm still from this part of the world because I was born here. But regardless, I'm, I'll still be related by blood, by, by a lot of things, right? So I want to understand how that works and how it's 
going to improve mm -hmm. the place. But I'm saying that breaking of Biafra from Nigeria is not going to automatically this, this solve the problem. This conversation for me isn't necessary about whether or not we need a Biafra. I think it's more about the East and his statement in the sentence saying that he doesn't want an Igbo president because they will be equipped enough to to give themselves the freedom they are trying to get. Uh, maybe that's we need that statement on screen. Maybe that's, that's what, that's you what you said. That's me, what you're that's understanding. Not what that's not what you said. said. But one thing I want um, a lot of people to know is that um, in every race, in every tribe, we have the good, we have the bad, mm -hmm. and I know that not all. Igbo people are in support of Biafra, right? Of course. And I believe that we just have to sanitize the Igbo people that are coming into power. I'm not against an Igbo president, but let us just know what your agendas are. What are you mm. going to do? Are you? And the truth is that every Biafran, everybody in support of Biafran, mm -hmm. are vocal about it. Yeah. So I don't think there is anybody that would get into presidency or would run a race that we would not know is history, that this person is a support of yeah. Biafrans yeah. already. And to come in there, I mean, th goodness is on the street. Mm -hmm. Screen now he says if they leave Nigeria we crumble. I think that is also acknowledging the strength that of comes Igbo from people. the east. Now my question to my fellow Igbo brothers is how exactly are we using the strength to elevate ourselves? I think we can think start by when we try me. to make a Nike sneakers. We don't put the tick upside down and name it Nike. <laughs> can we be innovative and give our own? I mean there's a lot going on. At least even if I don't know, Without, of anyway, uh, I know uh, what is going on in Aba and in Apia State, and that is that could be the industry hub of Nigeria, exactly. right? What exactly We're talking are we about doing to people move making forward? cars? Like, can we just move and beyond the That's why I still disagree oh, with uh, today. I'm like, why can't we have a, 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 an Igbo president then? No, no, can we, can yeah, we just, we, I think we are what due for an saying. Igbo president. So can I think we just they say he does not want an Igbo president. And he gave his reason, reason the flimsy reason. Yes, which that's, is what that's exactly what I'm saying. That is, that's the statement that's wrong about it. Like, mm. why would you come out to say you don't want an Igbo president because it's going to. Uh, it's strange. Well, mm. I just want everyone, whether it be African or not, whether you believe in it. United we stand, divided we fall. Absolutely. You might think by the time we get divided, hmm. that's when you get your strengths. It might just be the, your downfall. We need to heal from within. And I think we yeah. need to give every tribe the necessary um, attention. Inten being intentional about the type of attention you give them. Yeah. Sometimes it's not just about resources. What is the problem with the East? And how can we get them more involved? Mm -hmm. if, you're t if you're saying that you look at the history and there has never been an Igbo president and that still seems normal to you, then there's something wrong. Yeah, so and this whole federalism conversation and restructuring should yeah actually not just be on paper and having a committee or just sitting together they yeah. need to really be imputes that make the the average evil man understand that yes there's a restructuring going on yeah. and federalism is the true essence of nigeria yeah. or Thank whatever you. that means because Thank if you're going to so it's not just Biafra, on paper. it means that they're not feeling like they're part of nigeria yeah. i think everyone deserves to feel that way so we mm -hmm. need to work on that all right. Um, I think that's how much we can take on this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. And of course, please do send your opinions via WhatsApp to 0906057119 or tweet at us at Plus TV Africa. Also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always to go to my co-anchors, Ife Omai yep. and Ife Oluwa you feel me? And the entire production. I knew my name was coming next. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Do stay safe.